Okay, in no world should cactus mix feel this dense. That should weigh next to nothing. Should be nice and lofty. Nobody has cactus soil around here. Oh, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's it doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Atlas picking up some potting mix. Which bring out along, show you the plants. It's very crowded here though, so I don't know I don't know how much y'all are gonna be able to see. How much I'm going to be able to film that is. Did I have anything here that I can add to it that I'm sure I don't need? Because I probably have at home like some nice chunky perlite. I have some of that at home. I'll make it work. Should probably get two bags of the stuff that I've been trash talking just in case. Clarence plants. Huh? Anything standing out? You want you want one of these? Want a money plant? Here you go. Have to say, I am pretty impressed with these Baltic blue epiprenums that they have down here. They've had these for a long time and they look totally fine. Nothing going on with them. I guess I don't know that they've had these exact same ones for a long time, but they've been in the same spot for a very long time. Maybe they just keep getting in fresh ones, but like they don't look as good as they've been looking. But there's like no light over here. It's pretty dark, so I'm surprised. I'm still thinking that most of these are the same ones they've had because they don't look as good as they have in the past. Like you see down there. Not that hot looking down here. Clavia looks. Hmm. Yeah, where were these things during the summer? I don't want this this time of year. Also, can we stop with the decorative pots and mark them back down to like six or eight dollars like they used to be? That'd be great. Get those prices back down. I guess. 13 bucks isn't terrible, but not worth it to me. See, okay, there's there's the rest. Oh no, there's the rest. They rearranged. Not used to where the plants are. Lots of pothos. Oh, haven't seen one of these in the stores in a while. Beautiful pothos. Love the epiprenums. Oh no, I was wrong. There's more. It, like I said, they rearranged. I'm not familiar with the new layout. More. Fun looking Hoya over here. Got the splash on it. Don't know if it's supposed to be one of those with the splash. Nice thick leaves. This is a well grown out plants. Pleasantly surprised to see that the plants are starting to get bigger now. Two for ten dollars. Hmm. Oh no. That's no. Y'all remember about a month or two ago, I already did my damage with those succulents. Have enough. Don't need I really don't need any more plants. Want, yes. Need? Nah. Those super rare Raven ZZs. Remember that from 2020? Yep, there. There you go everywhere they sell them everywhere all right back to the house maybe gonna browse a little bit and then i can stop whispering and having to hold the phone so close to my face i'm gonna have to edit out every single breath that i take hey pumpkin did you miss me Wow, I really need to get that trim painted. Another project for another time. I ended up, I know I put four of them in the cart, but then I noticed on the package here, somewhere it said maximum of six tiles per unit. And this has six tiles in it, so to me that meant there, there's no reason to get more to connect to the lights that are up there. Those, that's what I'm talking about. I also assumed that, that was a bunch of crap, because why would you only be able to hook six of them up? These are very low wattage, very low voltage. I went ahead and I put four of the six that were in one of these boxes up there and it's fine. So I'll find out how many we can connect. I know none of this has anything to do with plants, but Saturdays are vlogs and this that's, that's what's going on. Hexagonal lights on clearance. If these can all hook together, I'm gonna go back and get the other ones because that is a fantastic deal. These things for the nicer ones are generally between like uh, one and 200 bucks for a pack of six to 10. So $13 a piece, that, that that's good. That's the price I'm happy with. I just finished a workout that <laughs> should not have winded me. <sighs> hey pumpkin. What, did something strike your fancy? Whatever that means. I don't know what part of you the, is the fancy. Probably your face, you got a cute face pumpkin. Oh, and the fish tank got set up. There's an update from last week's video. I ended up setting it up. The, same night that video came out. I just couldn't take it. I moved it up here and I was like, I can't just have an empty tank sitting around. That doesn't work. And I already had everything already cycled. So I just had to put everything in the tank. May as well just get it done. Makes me happy. Get to look at and fart over there while I do my editing. That's the, the angel fish. It's their names. Fun fish. I've been playing with those panels. Had a brief workout with the kettlebells. So not the same as swimming, but Pretty dang good. And now I had a whole bunch of packages piled up on the front porch. 
when I got here, so I thought I might go through them, open them up. Only one of them has anything plant related in them. The rest is probably fish stuff. I can't remember. Amazon, the shipping on things is really slowed down, so some stuff is backed up. Been waiting on uh, some stuff to come in for the garage. I have these lights that need to get hung up above the plants. I ordered uh, a type of hook that has a pulley you can use on it so I can adjust the height of the lights more easily. It's been a couple weeks and that isn't here yet so I might just cancel that and go ahead and hang them up because I'm not so sure that the whole pulley thing's even necessary. It probably isn't. Only one thing in here that's really plant related that I can think of and that's these sensors here. Is it, is it just one? I ordered multiples, I guess the rest will come later. Those are what I use inside of the enclosures when it gets cold outside, and I use them all over the place, really. These are the Govi wireless Wi-Fi thermo sensors. They relay the temperature and humidity. You can see your VPD with them. There's the model right there, H5179. I really like these. I know sometimes it might seem like getting tech involved with the plants isn't necessary. The thing I like using these for the most though is for extreme cold snaps like we just had. And I can take one and put it inside of the enclosure with the palm trees where, you know, all the frost cloth and lights and everything. Have one of these on the inside and I usually like to have one on the outside too so I can see what kind of difference there actually was in that spot. I can also set alarms on these. So through the app and the phone, I can say, okay, if the temperature drops below 15 degrees Fahrenheit, alert me. And then it would make my alarm on my phone start going off. So like with this last cold snap that we had where it got down to negative six in the middle of the night, some of the frost cloth got blown up off of my sable miners outside. Had I had one of these inside of those enclosures, it would have alerted me in the middle of the night. I would have known I would have gone out there and the problem wouldn't have happened. But I didn't. I only had two of these sensors. One of them needed to stay in the grow space because that's pretty important, right, to make sure the temperature was staying good with all those tropical plants in the garage. And then I put the other one in with my needle palms because those are, out of all my hardy palms I have outside, those are the most important ones to me. They'd be the hardest to replace. I've had them the longest. I used to have a lot more of these. The only downside to them, at least the ones that I had before, is that the battery acid stuff, it like corrodes on the inside after, I don't know, a couple of years it seems like. So I'm gonna have to replace a whole bunch. So now I have three working ones, Prior to this, I had like five. I had the other ones and I can put new batteries in them and I cleaned them up with like some alcohol swab or alcohol on a swab to get that battery stuff, acid stuff out. And I don't know, it still didn't really seem to do the trick. So I have to order a few more so I can space them out in the yard when we have those cold snaps. Fish food, some parrot treats, Nutriberries. Cosmo loves his Nutriberries. This is a good food for when you're getting new fish, the krill flake. A lot of fish go for this stuff. It's nice and stinky or something. I don't know what it is about it, but I've just noticed that pretty much all the fish take to this. And since I have the new tank set up, a larger tank, I know I'm gonna be getting more fish because I've already ordered them. They'll be here in a couple weeks. That's some fun stuff going in here. I don't think and fart are gonna get to stay in there. They're probably gonna have to move to my other tank, which they should be fine with. It's a little bit bigger than this one. We'll talk about all that stuff when it's fish tank time and more lights, because if you haven't noticed, I really, I just have an affinity for colorful lights. And <laughs> if you've done all this stuff with lighting in the video and y'all haven't gotten to see any of them on, so I should probably do something about that because I would imagine that that's probably not very entertaining to just show the boxes of the lights and not plug them in. I'll get some of those set up so you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's just fish stuff. Needed a new specimen container. I didn't really need the new specimen container, but I wanted a separate one to keep upstairs. It was a smaller size. I have a big one. The bigger ones are harder to scoop water out of. If you're not a fish person, this is what you use when you need to move a fish, or sometimes you just use them to separate a fish for a little while while you're doing something else. They're also nifty to leave your nets hanging in or do soakings if you need to sterilize, sanitize the nets, that sort of thing. And this is a new net. I have plenty of nets, but I wanted one with a telescoping handle on it because I can't reach the bottom of this. Well, I can't, but I can barely reach the bottom of this tank. That's hard to tell in a video, but it's really tall. I think it's 30 inches tall. The stand is like 32 inches tall, so by the time I like, get my arm wrapped around there, I can reach the bottom just not well. And I have other nets with long handles on them, but the handles don't collapse, so they're just, they're a pain to store. But I figured something with a telescoping handle be easier to keep underneath the stand again. I don't think anybody cares about the fish stuff, but that's what's going on with that. Oh, and some crushed oyster shell. This is actually for the fish tank. It can be used in certain applications with plants. I'm trying to like raise calcium, you maybe have some hardness issues with potty mixes and water soil stuff. This is pretty indicative of what kind of fish are gonna be coming. Can anybody guess? 
You got to know your fish. I'd be surprised if this was enough for you to be able to guess, but it might be. And the last thing, predator mites. It's time for another dosage of mites out in the growth space. These were on the front porch for a while, and it's like 36 degrees. They should be okay, because I've actually stuck these in the fridge for a couple days when they came in the mail once, and I wasn't ready to put them out. I don't remember what the reasoning was, but they were fine. Should be okay. I don't see any movement, though, but it's also not very bright in here. Camera makes it seem a lot brighter than it is. I might set some of these lights up, because I feel like a jackass showing all these lights and not actually doing anything with them, and then we can go out to grow space. don't have a ton I can do out there right now, other than water and release some predator mites. I'm waiting for those things to come in the mail, but... That's okay, that needs to be done, and uh, I think there's probably some new leaves. Probably some updates to give. I don't know. We'll go out and look at plants. Another reason I like to have the container to put the nets in, because then they don't have to... Because then they don't have to end up sitting on a surface like this and make a mess. You can also just put them in like a Tupperware container. That works too. It's just nifty. I like having these around. Speaking of which... Price on these? Holy freaking crap, that skyrocketed. The last time I bought a bunch of those, they were like, I don't know, three to five dollars a pop? That thing was like 18 bucks. The hell? That's excessive. It's a good thing I only needed the one. I love these things. I'm gonna put them in here, up on the inside where you can't see them, and light up that inside and then get all this stuff cleaned up in there. Speaking of which, dark furniture? Don't really know what I was thinking. Every single speck of dust. Like, I have to dust in here pretty much every day, which is nice as far as cleanliness goes. Not so nice as far as just obsessive compulsive tendencies, not disorder, just, just the tendencies. Like little things like this from where the dog walks by and somehow his jowls always leave a mark on everything. Driven me nuts. Also realize that there's like five different types of wood in this room and three different types of... It's whatever. Just getting started. And yes, somebody commented... DM'd me politely about the paint on the trim last time and gave me some tips about how not to get the paint on the trim. This is all being torn up and replaced with five inch baseboard, so I was like, I don't care. I just painted all the way down to the bottom, which was fun. Actually, it was very liberating to paint and just be like, right down there, not tape it off or anything. That was nice. These have an adhesive on the background. I'm only, I feel like most people know about these things, but if you don't, here you go. They have an adhesive. You peel off the back sticks you run it around plug it in sync it to your phone into the app the govi app i like the govi lights i'll just do it and show it to you you're not gonna be able to see anything that's going on in here so i'm just gonna put it up on the inside so that there will be lights in just a moment there will be lights uh what do we think i like it i don't know about the dodecahedron in there i like it but it's kind of hard to tell that it's even doing anything with the ow that was a Dumb place to put that. Right on the ankle with the LEDs on above. You can't really see how cool this thing is. Look at, look at that. Isn't that fun? That looks pretty cool down there on its own, but that wasn't the point. The point here was to have the LEDs going. So I'll probably find a different place to put that. I just wanted something in the middle, honestly, just because there's a spot on here that I keep scrubbing and it's not coming up. So I wanted to set something on top of it. I had that. Worked out fine. That looks pretty cool. Hello. For my reflection, it's actually easier to see in the TV than it is through the camera. But I'm going to try my... But oh, no. That's coming through better than it did when I was trying this out. Got 18 of them hooked up. Did six of them. Six tiles per unit by unit. I just... I don't stubbed my toe again on the kettlebell. There's an adapter that goes on there. And I assume that it's a wattage thing about how far the voltage or electric... I, d I don't know. They have a reason for saying you can only hook six of them together, but there's 18. Seems to be working just fine. I don't know for sure if I actually am going to go back and get more, though. I mean, it would be nice to fill in those gaps that are up there. The store only had two more, so it might be a waste of a visit. The reason I had only gotten two instead of the four to begin with was because I could think of a couple people who would enjoy those as gifts if I couldn't use them over here. So I suppose maybe I'll pop out and see if they have any more. They look pretty cool. In person, there's like a, a ripple effect you see as the lights move from one to another. It's not showing on camera as well. It's fun. Kind of dizzying, but fun to look at. Probably enough lighting stuff and head out. Do some plant things, probably in the morning when I release the predator mites. It was a fun day. Got to go to Lowe's, play with lights, do fish tank stuff. Now, plant things. 
Good morning. I don't know how to reach those. Got it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Turns out around 18 to 20 was the max. So it's a really good thing that I have 24 extras over here. That's fantastic. Not a big deal. The only reason that I had had an issue with it only working at six panels at a time was because I didn't want cords running over the place. But I can easily tap through the wall and come down and have something plug in. Y'all need to worry about that when I finish up with this room. There will be a reveal of whatever it is I decide to do there that I know. Where are the plants? Probably getting frustrated by now waiting for all the plants. And there is one other thing too. There is an extreme reflection on the TV. I don't, I might, I might have to rethink this. You see the glitching? When I have over 20 on here, they kind of just freak out. It makes sense. There's only so much wattage. The signals can only travel so far. Going to work out just fine. Let's go out to the grow space and play around with the plants. Ever used this stuff before? I don't have a ton of experience with it. I tried it out years ago and just never followed through with using it consistently so i don't have much of anything to say about it let me know down below in the comments what you think of it the appeal to something like this is you just give it a little shake and then when it's time to fertilize do a little squirt on the surface as well that wasn't a full squirt of you know, like want to give them a nice full pump and then when you water that should uh, release this very mild fertilizer into the soil of the plant. And that's assuming, right, that we're not flushing the soil through multiple times to get a full watering. So when I have used this, I made sure to lightly water the plants first just to get some moisture in there or in the soil and then give a squirt of the fertilizer and water it in. It's not something where I would expect much to happen. I've mentioned before that I like to add fertilizer pretty much every time I water, just in very small amounts, generally about a quarter dose, sometimes even less than that. Overall, just seems to help with the growth and stability of the plants. Because potting soil's pretty inert, and calling it soil is even a stretch in most cases, right? Unless you're adding a lot of organic material into it. For the most part, with potted plants, depending on what your soil, potting blend, I should say, kind of growing things hydroponically, right? If a lot of the nutrient and minerals, just everything that the plants are going to be using to grow is dependent on the water rather than what's inside the soil or in the blend. That's hydroponic. Using something like this, it just adds a little bit of something, but I'm not sure if it's adding enough for it really to be worth it. Derived from food protein, fish protein, stabilized with phosphoric acid and potassium sulfate. Okay, sounds great. Know that something like this is not going to be super potent, right? You have to use, if you're doing this in water, in your watering can, eight pumps per gallon of water. I was trying to hold this up here and fairly still so you could read the directions, but it's one pump per gallon of soil too. So for a larger potted plant, it says four to five pumps. Not necessarily something that's going to make a gigantic difference with the plants, but maybe a nice additive to have in between fertilizing. So instead of me mixing up a quarter shrink fertilizer into my can every time I water. Just go through and do some squirts of this stuff, water it in, and then once a month, just do a regular fertilizing like I normally would. I'm gonna give that a try for the rest of the indoor growing season. So now through, I don't know, March, something like that, and just see what happens. Now it's gonna be all anecdotal. I'm not gonna like, measure anything or compare any groups of plants, nothing like that. But I just thought it'd be interesting to ask y'all what your thoughts and opinions were on that sort of thing. I don't like that the ingredients list is pretty incomplete. I would like to know what's in this. It feels familiar to me to a fish fertilizer, which might be all that is. It doesn't have the stench of a fish fertilizer, but I also I haven't really gone in and sniffed it, uh, nor do I plan to. I don't see myself doing that. Not interested in going in and sniffing these pots. For the heliconias, I've been doing two pumps because, well, I mean, look at them. Heliconias like a lot of nutrient. I haven't been using much at all inside of the cactus, and I'm trying my best 
to not get very much of this on the surface of any of the leaves. Oh, and another thing to be careful about, at least the bottle I got, the stuff squirts out the sides, so I'm trying to not wear anything that I wouldn't be okay with getting stained and ruined. That, why? I need to do something about that. That's, that's a bunch of crap. I suppose if I really think about it, or try and focus on the odor, there is kind of a sulfury, farty, all-natural fertilizer fragrance that is in the growth space after I use it. It's not super pungent like with a fish fertilizer, but it is still pretty strong. I'm thinking this uh, ginger back here, that's not, clearly, that's not working out. You see it? That thing looks terrible. Like, really, really bad. I think it's a light issue because it was doing okay until I moved the croton up here onto the table. When that got moved on the table, that's just hasn't been looking too hot. I'm thinking I'm going to, well, pull it down, give it a good cut back and clean up and get it moved over here because I have two new grow lights that are going up here. I already have one of the pulleys up there that you can kind of see it hanging from the ceiling up there. I have another one that needs to go in right next to it. And those are the things I'm talking about that I'm waiting to come in the mail. So perhaps the ginger will do better over here moved from the blast of the heat, perhaps? I'm not really sure. The heat doesn't seem to be bothering the Monstera, which is was in the path. There's a tiny, tiny bit of browning on there, but not very much considering how long this has all been running. Also, Alpinias, they, they're just a royal pain in the butt indoors, even with all the warmth and humidity. So I'm not really surprised that that's happening over there, but I don't know, we'll pull it down next week. I don't have time for all that today. Uh, when the new lights are up and over here, maybe I'll have a sunnier spot. I can put that more directly underneath and it'll get up and moving again. It's worth a shot. Seems reasonable that it would bounce back better with new lighting conditions, something more intense. Went through, watered all that fertilizer in. It's not something I can really do with the camera out. The hose that I use has a big crack in it, so water sprays out of one of the cracks. I'll need to change that out. This tank's empty. As you also all those fish are upstairs now, so I'm gonna find something to do with that. That's gonna clear up a big space in here to move a few more plants out, maybe do some work on shaping the Monstera up. One thing I've noticed this winter that I haven't seen any other winter that I've had this thing inside is some amazing aerial root action. Delicios is not a Monstera that actually needs to grab onto something. You know, naturally in nature, those would just go right down the surface of whatever they're climbing and anchor themselves into the ground more so than onto the surface, but it's still nice to see it. Having the heat and the humidity has made a big difference. The, the new humidifier, the new heater, that's there's a good sign there that things are looking nice. This is all relatively new. Like within the last month or so, these were just little nubs not that long ago. They're really starting to do some moving. The other reason I need to get the more powerful intense lights on over here the hibiscus. In years past, I've always stored the hibiscus as more of a dormant plant and just let them chill out during the winter time and not expected much growth of any kind out of them. Kind of low to medium light in a cooler spot. But that new heater, it's so warm in here, there isn't really a cooler spot to put them in. They want to keep growing, so if that's the case. They're going to need a big cutback and they need to go underneath some more intense lighting, which is why I was thinking I may have to do something else with the Monstera because if I'm going to have more intense lighting, from up here coming down onto everything, then that's how it might be a bit much for this one. I'd rather not risk it, especially when all I have to do is like scoot it back a foot or two. The grill lights, they tend to have a pretty narrow space. I have two of them going up and each one has a four foot space. I'll need an eight foot section in here. The pond's six feet just to give you an idea of what I'll be working with here. And hey, look at the mess. Isn't this fun? Now that these are done, the holidays are over, not everything's done in the house as far as contractors go. That's going to be an ongoing thing. Somebody showed up this morning just to take measurements for flooring and there's there's a whole bunch of other stuff that's about to start happening. Things are going to get chaotic again. But I should have a week or two free to come out here and uh, start getting some supports in up here for new lighting on these shelves. Maybe get an ebb and flow system set up over here. Haven't decided if I want to do that or not. We'll see. Something I haven't really decided whether or not I want to do. But what I do have to do is get those lights up there because I still have some big plants that I would like to get put up onto these shelves here, but I don't want to do that until they're ready. Also, clearly, still have some pruning to do. Good news, though, 
I haven't really noticed any spider mites. I never noticed them to a point where I was concerned or freaking out about anything out here as it was. I just saw some signs where I was like, yeah, this is probably the onset of a problem. So I started with the predatory mites right away. And as y'all saw, I got some more in and put those out this morning before I went to the hardware store. And seems to be doing the trick. Or perhaps it was never a problem to begin with. And it was just dust and weird stuff blown out from the heater up there. I don't know. Better safe than sorry. It's pretty easy to sprinkle those things around and just let them do their thing. So that's what's been going on out here. By what's been going on, I mean not much because I've been handling all the stuff in the house for the past week. You know, the holidays ended and then just finishing up projects that I had to put on pause because of the holidays. Pretty much done with all that stuff now, though. I need to come out here and do a lot of pruning. Also, all the crispy leaves and that oleander over there is not doing great. The ginger over there, that's where... I'm at though out here. Lights, get the fish tank out of here. I need to figure out a different system with watering because this hose has a crack in it now, which these types of pipes tend to do that over time. And so when I pull it out to water, it sprays water in all directions from the hose. And that's not great because there are electronics out here. So I'd rather it didn't do that. There will probably be some runs to the hardware store next week, especially if these pulleys don't ship. I'm just gonna, if by the end of the day, I don't get something saying they've shipped, then I'm gonna cancel the order and just figure something else out. Cause I don't have to have a pulley system for the grow lights. It would just be nice and kind of fun. I have to go up there and mount things into the stud anyway. So why not hook them up to something where I can move them up and down and change, you know, how close they are to the plants. I think that would be nice. Probably not necessary though, because everything that's over here, as far as lighting is concerned with uh, other than the hibiscus, been doing pretty well. So adding more lights is really more so I just have a spot with more intense lights for the hibiscus and to help pull plants out of some issues like the ginger over there that might be helpful to have something more intense coming down from the ceiling for them. But in order to have that, I'll, it would be nice to have one that I can lower down lower for those plants. That's a, I never, that was the point I was trying to make and I never got there. I was talking about not wanting a ton of light from a grow light directly over the Monstera, so I'll need to scoot that back some and also it would shade everything that's underneath it. But by having the lights on something where I can adjust them, that would be nice because I can lower them down and then when it's time to water, pull them up so that they're out of the way and I don't have to worry about splashes or anything getting on them and that would probably be the right way to do it but if that's not how it's going to work out that's not how it's going to work out I don't really care all right that's going to do it let me know y'all's thoughts on the Dr. Earth pump and grow stuff which I'm pretty sure is just fish fertilizer and seaweed based on the proportion with the fertilizer numbers there and the odor and consistency and it just seems like fish fertilizer and seaweed but have you tried it? Have you noticed anything? It's all anecdotal, but anecdotal can still be helpful. And, uh, thanks for hanging out while I have a great time playing with lights. Something that always makes me happy. And Happy New Year. Don't remember if I said that in the last video. If everybody's having a good New Year and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. I just saw the empty jar from the spider mites and forgot to tell y'all this morning when I came downstairs to grab those, to sprinkle them onto the plants, it was no longer sitting out where I'd left it. And I thought to myself, I said, self, where, where would somebody put this. What does this look like? Comment down below. Can you guess if you were to stumble upon that jar and not have any idea what's in it, not bother reading a label, maybe you're scatterbrained, where would you put it? If you guessed spice rack, you were correct. That's exactly where it was. Somebody had shoved it into the spice rack. Okay, I guess that wasn't that great of a story. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye. This video is supposed to be out in like half an hour and now it's not gonna be out until two. Just because I wanted to let everybody know there's been an exciting development. Look what, look what's in there this morning. We got some eggs. It's not that exciting, these two. Not the best of parents. Pretty normal for angelfish, at least for their first few spawns. And they've spawned before. They tend to either eat their babies or let the other fish eat their babies. They are very passive for being angelfish. They're not very aggressive. So that's, yeah. We'll see what happens there. So, thought it was exciting. It was neat getting to see her doing her thing, laying some eggs, and just being nice, happy fish. That's a sign of health and happiness. So that's good. All, all good things. That's all. I, this is probably not worth me delaying this video coming out by, like, what, four hours now? <laughs> but I think it's fun, and it's cute. I like watching the fish do their fish thing and be good fish parents. Uh -huh.